Hey, 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 welcome back to my channel. Uh, right now it's 11 o'clock on Thursday. It is the second day of ARCO. I went back to IFEMA to visit ARCO again for the second time. Yesterday I went there and I checked out one of the two pavilions. So usually it's seven and nine. And seven is more modern, established, expensive artworks, big galleries, the uh, old and institutional group of the art world. And then the nine is more experimental, emerging, contemporary from younger art galleries or younger artists. And yesterday I went into nine directly because I want to see what's new. And I'm always with the newer generation of artists and art galleries. And I was happy with what I've seen. And I made the video quickly and 3.30 I uploaded, published, I went to bed. And I was sinking in the bed, you know, it's like the big picture is not complete. So I wanted to come back today and do more. So I'm glad that I put to be continued <laughs> in the end of the video. So now I can do this part two of the Pavilion 7. And just to show you, in the meantime, I'm showing you, I want to tell you some stories because I want to kind of entertain you and kind of, you know, give you more info and content within the time that you're watching. Uh, the timeline is limited, but the content should be multi-dimensional. So that's what I'm going to do. So if you feel it's a little bit annoying to so turn off the voice, just watch the pictures. Don't, don't turn off the voice. Let me, let me speak. So I'm going to share with you four encounters I have encountered during the three, four hours today. Uh, I was there around uh, one o'clock and then I stayed until like, yeah, six and I left and I went to Just Madrid. I'm going to produce another video on Just Madrid. Um, again, I didn't have enough time for Just Madrid, so maybe I'll come back tomorrow and make a video on that. So if you like, um, hit on subscribe and turn on the little bell so you don't miss the upcoming videos. So back to the encounters. Uh, yesterday, when I was in front of Thomas Schutz Gallery, the German gallery, uh, I saw this beautiful mechanical butterfly. And I was like, oh, that's so nice. And I sensed someone was behind me watching me. It's kind of a sixth sense. And I turned back and there was like a big camera with big lens. I was like, is that a Canon C100? And he was like, no, it's a C300. Da, 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 da. So we started talking cameras. As I went to film school, I did uh, filmmaking in my bachelor's degree. I did a uh, master in film studies. Now I'm doing a PhD in documentary filmmaking. So I'm into cameras and uh, image. So I asked him about what he was doing. And he said, I'm making a documentary on this artist. And I was like, oh, tell me all about it. Because this is kind of what I'm interested too. I would like to make documentary on artists. I would like to teach artists how to make documentaries of themselves on their own so they don't have to rely on filmmakers. So I would like to get some info from, you know, kind of experience from what he was doing or had been doing. And he explained to me that he partnered up with another person, an artist. Uh, he approached the artist and said, you know, I want to make a documentary with you. Uh, you don't need to pay me. I don't pay you. And we collaborate and make this together. And he started the project three years ago. He wanted to do it totally for 10 years. So there are seven years to go. And in the end of seven years, they will produce a documentary for the competition to release. Um, I don't know where the platforms in seven years, maybe Netflix is not there. I don't know. So they would like to uh, make it a product in the future to be able to monetize it. But during the 10 years, they would just focus on producing content without showing anyone or anything. So I was like, hey, you know, come on, I'm sure in the last three years with the pandemic and everything, you can make something really cool. You can uh, show people how an artist is dealing with the pandemic, you know, confronting it, overcoming it. It must be a lot of dramatic, maybe a little traumatic content. You can already show something to people. You don't have to wait 10 years, right? So it's all about showing people what you've been doing when you're doing it so they're more engaged, they're more interested in checking on you to see how you're doing, you know, this relationship. And that's why uh, a lot of artists make a living from uh, showing, for example, on YouTube, or on Patreon, or on Instagram, IGTV, or other social media platforms, showing the process of making the art instead of the final result. And they were like, no, nothing traumatic or dramatic happened during the pandemic. I was like, no way, you know, give up. I'm sure there's something good. And they're like, no, 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 we're not forcing anything dramatic to happen. This is not our work ethic. We want to create a very poetic, uh, quiet, uh, non-conflictive image. It's like an art project rather than a film project. I was like, fair enough, but I'm sure you can do something, you know, like, and they're like, no, 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 no. You know, we want to make it a 
And then the, the filmmaker, uh, the artist, they were both Spanish, so they ran out of English word to describe it. And I was like, you mean like a paisaje, like a still life? And they're like, yeah, 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 like a still life. We want to make an image, documentary still life of an artist's life, and it's about time passing. I was like, okay, cool, time passing. <laughs> you know, why not? Time always pass, and there's no point of return. Interesting, poetic. So in seven years, I'm going to check on their project. And maybe I will do a review. Or if they release something, I will let you know as well. So that's really kind of interesting for me to know that there are people in the art world um, you know, re documenting, recording, and doing something with the documentary. That is my goal, to be able to help artists make documentaries and to be able to make documentary of artists. So. Then there's a second encounter with, uh, also in the Pavilion 9, uh, with Hua International. I was going uh, in the back around the corner and I saw this from far beautiful, colorful lamps that looked like Chinese traditional lamps. So I went and I saw this very pretty Chinese lady sitting there and I was like, oh, this is a Chinese gallery. That's new. Like, I haven't seen a Chinese gallery before at Arco. Maybe there were, but I haven't seen myself. So that was a first for me. So I went to her and I said, what's your name? She's like, my name is Hua. <laughs> I was like, okay, Hua. Hua International. Hua means in Chinese flower. And I was like, where are you from? She's like, I'm from Xi'an. I just want to double check. I don't want to start speaking Mandarin when this person is uh, another you know, Asian nationality. That's kind of rude. <laughs> Coming to them and started with Ni Hao. You know? And she's like, I'm from Xi'an. I'm like, I'm from Beijing. And she was very happy. She switched to Mandarin. We talked. So Hua International is a very young gallery from Beijing and Berlin. So they are in two locations. And it's Hua and her partner, her husband. Uh, they run these two galleries together. So it's a lot of work. And they had just been open for two years. And that's very, very young. So as you know that after two years, normally you can apply to some really large fairs. Uh, most of the national level art fairs, you need to be at least two years old. That is like a kind of a industrial standard. But they had been just two years. That's a really like the limit, 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 right? Like barely legal kind of limit, right? So that's really surprising for me because I didn't know Arco could be so progressive, you know, so experimental. But I'm happy for them because the fact that they could come here from all the way from China and also Arco could uh, integrate a uh, young, energetic, uh, exotic gallery. I'm happy with the changes and I wish them best luck. And then the third encounter happened today. I went into the Pavilion 7 as I entered. A girl saw me and she stared at me, you know, with a kind of a, hmm, I think I know you face. And I stopped and she's like, do you happen to have a YouTube channel? I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh yeah, I watched your videos. I watched many of them. And I started talking about what we do uh, at Vera Perry Gallery. And she started introducing herself. She works for IT Gallery. So I was like, IT it, which one is it? <laughs> She's like, it's IT Gallery. It's not really a gallery. It is an IT software company for galleries. So <laughs> it's like IT, really IT. So it's not it gallery. <laughs> And the project is very interesting. It's a logistic software, all-round solution, one-stop shop for art professionals, art galleries, dealers, or you know, if you maybe if you run your own gallery as an artist, maybe you can use them too. And it's a Spanish uh, company. It's not a startup. It's a company, and they have a parallel project that is even more interesting. Is XBFI, like uh, online viewing room, but with potential in the future a paying system. I made a video before uh, about online viewing room and one of the problem is that they don't offer payment system. It's like, come to see the virtual show and go with nothing left. It's like, it's really bad. Like, I think the whole point of having that is to be able to have live chat, to be able to pay, right? That, that's the whole point. Otherwise, why would you want to make like a spend money, make a, a show online just to have nothing ended, right? It's like, it doesn't make sense. So XP5 in the future, um, by the end of the year, they should launch the payment system within the exhibition. I haven't seen the demo because they don't have it yet live. So maybe that could be something interesting. So I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to check back on them later. And the last, ex the last encounter was super funny. Um, today I was at this um, bar area grabbing a water and I was waiting with my mask on, waiting impatiently for my water and they were really, 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 really slow. It's just the water, just give it to me. Just give me the water. And I was there for several minutes without anything. So I was just oh, bored. And someone tapped my shoulder from behind. I turned 
And this person was like, hey, how many years we haven't seen each other? Hey, like, do you remember me? Don't tell me that you don't remember me. You collected some of my works years ago. Do you remember me now? And then he was, you know, removing his mask. Um, it was allowed because uh, we were at the bar area where people drink. And of course, when you drink, you have to remove your masks. And I saw the face. I was like, for sure, I don't know this person never in my life. So I was like, uh, no, but just to be sure. So I removed my mask for him to see that I might be the wrong person. So, you know, instead of double blind, it's double seeing test to see if we know each other. And he was like, oh, are you so? I'm like, mm. No, I'm not Sal, I'm not Pepper, no, I'm not nobody, <laughs> I'm not Sal. So I was like, no, sorry, sir, I'm not. And he was like, he was speaking Spanish to me the whole time, so he was like, de igual, and he went. So it's like, the same, and he went. It's not like, oh, I'm sorry, the same, but no, no, I'm sorry, not one word of apology or embarrassment or nothing, like, oh, I'm so sorry, excuse me, nothing. And he's like, you guys look the same, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to interpret, but you, you know, if you speak Spanish, maybe tell me, de igual, and he left without saying anything else. I feel quite offended because you don't, you know, come and tap on someone. So, I mean, you don't come and say this and then say, you guys look the same and go away. And that reminds me of how um, hostile, how uh, unfriendly uh, the art world is. You know, I'm sure he's a mature artist and he might even be exhibiting at Arco right now and maybe that's the reason he's there and for sure he had some international collectors that's why he thought I was one of his past collectors so he's a mid-career or mature artist international artist making a good living you know as a mature artist here and <laughs> and he was so rude I would say maybe he was too embarrassed to you know handle this situation but you don't come to someone like that and, and go without a word of apology or saying goodbye you know? he should have said oh what's your name then you know like oh you know we should get get to know each other nothing you know he wasn't even interested if I'm not one of his buyers adios child or even without saying like Hmm. So I think it's a good example of how not to treat people <laughs> at art fairs or in the art world. And if you had other kind of funny stories um, in the art fair or in the art world, let me know in the comments below. Um, let's say who had worse experience here. So that was my four encounters in the Chronicle Order. They were not associated or related of anyhow. It's just kind of came into my mind in the late evening after all day uh, seeing different artworks. So that was it for Arco and tomorrow I'm going back to Just Madrid. Um, today I went there late so I didn't have a lot of time talking to people and I just had my first impression and tomorrow I'm gonna come back and give you the full review of Just Madrid and show you what's new in this emerging little brother of Arco. All right that's it thank you very much for watching um, don't forget to click like if you enjoyed this video click Unlike twice if you did not like this video so much. All right. Thank you and see you next time.